Hello everyone. Welcome to Ace Engineering Academy. So welcome to Ace Online Platform. So here we are going to discuss about power systems. My name is DMV Prasad. I am going to discuss power systems for you. So coming to power systems, power systems is one of the most important subject for you. Here, see here, I am saying here, welcome to the world of power systems. I am saying why it is world of power systems. Because in electrical engineering, we are going to learn about or we are going to know about transmission, generation and distribution of the electrical energy. So what is the actual meaning of electrical engineering? We have to generate the electrical energy, we have to transmit the electrical energy and we have to distribute the electrical energy to the consumers. So in electrical engineering, we are going to save the, that means serve the consumers. We are going to serve the consumers by, by giving the electrical energy. Now, whereas in power systems, in power system, we are going to study about, we are going to study about the generation of electrical energy, transmission of electrical energy and distribution of the electrical energy. That means if you want to understand something about electrical engineering, you need to study power systems very well. And also this power systems covers a major syllabus, a major syllabus in almost all competitive exams, in almost all competitive exams. So that you have to learn power systems to get maximum mass or to get a job in a competitive exam. Clear? Now, coming to the syllabus of power systems, this is the syllabus of power system. We are going to study about what are those? Generation of electrical energy, transmission and distribution of electrical energy and along with that we have to analyze the power systems. Power system analysis, power system analysis. And also we are going to study about switchgear and protection, how to protect our elements, how to protect our elements and utilization of the electrical energy. How can we utilize the electrical energy? See here, generation of electrical energy and transmission and distribution of the electrical energy and power system analysis and also what we are going to study here, switchgear and protection and utilization of the electrical energy. This is the complete uh, syllabus of, syllabus set of power systems, power systems. Now, see here, coming to the weightage, coming to the weightage of power systems here, for KPTCL exam, so we are having uh, KPTCL Karnataka Power Transmission Corporation Limited has given approximately 6 marks in 2011 and 7 marks, uh, Karnataka Power Corporation Limited has given 7 marks and Gulbarga Electrical Supply Company has given 2 marks, just only 2 marks here. But whereas here, Mescom in 2017 they have given 29 marks, out of 100 they have given 29 marks. So what is Mescom? Bangalore Electric, uh, Supply, Electrical Supply Company. And whereas uh, Bangalore Water Services Savaris Board is also given some questions here, seven questions. And this is the syllabus of power systems, whereas the power system analysis itself, the power system analysis itself is having approximately 50% of the syllabus of the power systems. 50% of the syllabus of the power systems. Is it clear everyone? Now see here. So these are weightage of power systems in 100 marks. This is the weightage of power system analysis only. Power system analysis only. And what are the textbooks we can prefer? So you can ask me, sir, what are the textbooks we can prefer? Right. See that these are the textbooks you can take. These are the textbooks. The best textbooks of power systems. The best textbooks I'm saying of the power systems. Anyone we can take in these four. Anyone uh, in these four you can take. Right. So uh, first one is power system analysis by uh, Stevenson and Greiger, power system analysis by Stevenson and Greiger and electrical power systems by John Willey Publications and power system analysis and design by Duncan Glover, Duncan Glover, one of the best book, right? And modern power system analysis by D.P. Kotari and I.J. Nagarathar. So they are the best books. If you want to learn power systems clearly from zero to or A to Z, right? A to Z, if you want to learn power systems, you need to take any one of these textbooks. Not I'm saying uh, each and every one. You can take any one and start reading, start practicing, right? Start practicing the example problems and start practicing, uh, start solving the uh, problems what they have given in the exercise. Is it clear? And these two textbooks I have mentioned here, these two are preferred for the state uh, electricity board exams. So what are these uh, CL Vadva and JB Gupta? Why? Because they have given some uh, multiple objective questions at the end of the textbooks. So at the end of the textbooks, these two as consisting of more number of objective questions. So that you can take these two. What is this? Electrical power systems by CL Vadva 
and a course in power systems by J.B. Gupta. A course in power systems by J.B. Gupta. So this is the clear cut idea. First of all, we need to uh, identify what is the syllabus of power systems and what are the textbooks I can prefer, right? And then what to do now, what to do now. Now in AS Engineering Academy, we are going to provide, we are going to provide online classes as well as offline. That means offline recording also, you will be available. Now, so you can go through those videos or you can attend the classes so that you can get maximum marks in the KPTCL exam. Now coming to today, in this class, we are going to study about just basics of power systems. In the basics of power systems, so what are the questions we, are, we can get, we can expect? There are a lot of questions in the basics itself. In KPTCL exam, there are a lot of questions in the basics itself. Now see here, so what we are going to study? So basics of power systems. Actually, right, actually, the basics of power systems means the basics of single phase power systems as well as the basics of three phase power systems. We need to study about single phase power systems as well as three phase power systems. Whenever you are able to understand the basics completely, then only it will be possible to understand the power system transmission, power system distribution, and power system analysis completely. Analysis completely. Clear everyone? Now, power system basics means in the single phase, what I have to study. In three phase, what I have to study. Right? It's a just simple a single phase and three phase power system. But in, if you go to the syllabus, it's not that much simple, right? We need to study uh, what we have to study. In single phase systems, what you have to study? In single phase studies, we have to study about calculation of instantaneous power, calculation of complex power. What is instantaneous power? What is complex power? What is impedance? What is admittance? Right? How to draw the waveforms? What is lagging? What is leading? Right? All those things we have to study in the single phase systems. Similarly, coming to the three phase again, uh, what is instantaneous power in three phase? What is complex power in three phase? How to calculate them? How to calculate them? And how can we utilize them in the unbalanced system or in the power system analysis or entire power system? Entire power system. That means if you want to study about, if you want to uh, know about transmission or distribution or analysis, analysis. What are the analysis? Load flow analysis, fault analysis, and stability analysis. Right? If you want to understand all these things, you should be strong in the basics. You should be strong in the basics. Then only it will be possible to understand those, co those concepts. Is it clear? So in this class, <coughs> in this class, so we are going to discuss about this one. Single line diagram of the power system and ratings of the power system elements and importance of the power factor and importance of the complex power, complex power. I will give you a just brief idea about all these things, all these things. Now, a power system is a huge interconnected system. A power system is a huge interconnected system. And it is very difficult to solve any problem in the power system. Any problem in the power system. So that to analyze the power system very easily and to understand the power system very easily, so we have introduced a separate diagram called single line diagram of the power system. So in the single line diagram of power system, we can represent each and every element of the power system as separate, separate elements as separate, separate elements. Why? Because starting from the generator to the load, starting from the generator to the load, there are lot of elements we have interconnected. What are those? Generators, transformers, transmission lines, and the loads. And the loads, these are the various elements we are having in the entire power system network. So to understand that one, to understand that one, we have introduced a single line diagram. So in the single line diagram, what are the elements we have to study and what is the importance of those elements we will study in the single line diagram. And coming to the second one, what are the rating of these elements? What are the ratings of those elements? Suppose in the some problem, they, have, they will give some data. Ah, what is that data? I have to know first of all. So I need to start a problem. While starting a problem, what is the data they have given? They have given the line voltage or they have given the phase voltage. We don't know. Why? Because there are several ratings available in the power system. So what we know actually, we have to know. Are you, are you getting me? What we know, that means what is available there. First of all, we have to know what is the meaning of that one. They have given, it is 11 kilo volts. Uh, what is that 11 kilo volts? Is a line voltage or phase voltage? First of all, we have to know. So once you get the clarity about that one, then it is very easy to solve that one. Why? Because we are strong in mathematics. 
but uh, we are weak in power systems. So that we have to understand the electrical terminology. We have to understand the electrical terminology. So to understand the electrical terminology, first of all, so we need to go for the ratings of the power system elements. Ratings of the power system elements. And we will see the importance of the power factor in the system. And we will see the importance of the complex power in the system. And the importance of power factor will give you uh, a very good conclusions for you. So try to listen to the class up to the end. So I will give you very good conclusions from the power factor and very good conclusions, very important conclusion from the complex power. Complex power. Now we are going to into the analysis, right? <clears throat> Just we are starting here. The single line diagram of the power system. The single line diagram of the power system. So coming to the single line diagram, just see here. So what are the elements we are having in the single line diagram? What are the elements we are having in the single line diagram? See here, the elements are generator, transformer, transmission line, and one more transformer, and the motors. Motors. So here we have generator, and here we have the motors. Now see here, why I have represented the motors there? I need to represent the load there, right? I need to represent the load. Actually, it should be the load in the system. It should be the load, right? But in the place of load, I have written the motors. Uh, what is the load actually on the power system? What is the load actually on the power system? There are two major types of the loads. There are two major types of the loads. So one is the illumination loads and one is the motors. There are two types of the loads. Illumination loads and the motors. Illumination loads are nothing but the lighting loads. The lighting loads. And the second one is the motoring loads. See here? So the total loads will be of two types. One will be illumination load. Illumination loads. And the second one will be motoring loads. Motoring loads. If you see here, if you compare these two loads, 90% of the loads are of motoring loads. 90%, more than 90 also we can say. More than 90 also we can say. So approximately 90% of the loads are of the motoring loads. And only 10% we are having the illumination loads are the lighting loads. Lighting loads. That's why we have represented here the motors. Represented here the motors. Clear? Now, coming to, coming to the analysis of this one, which type of elements can we call as generators? Which type of elements can we call as generators? And which type of elements can we call as loads? Can we call as loads? We have studied active and passive elements in network theory. Just recall that one. Just recall that one. So what are the active elements? Or what are the sources? What are the sources? Right? So in power system terminology, I'm saying here, the elements, the elements which are able to deliver, which are able to deliver active power to the system. The elements which are able to deliver active power to the system, they are called as the generators. They are called as the sources or the generators. A source is an element which is able to deliver active power to the system. Active power to the system. System means it may be consisting of loads, transformers, transmission lines. Right, whatever they are, that element, what is that element? Generator or source is able to deliver active power to the system. Active power to the system. That means, from by taking active power from the generator, by taking active power from the generator, the remaining elements will take the active power losses. Will take the active power losses. They will satisfy themselves. They will satisfy themselves. Is it clear, everyone? Now I'm writing here. This is a generator. The generator is able to deliver active power to the system. So that I am writing here, this element delivers, this element delivers active power to the system. And coming to the loads, what are the loads? The loads are the consumers. The consumers are always takes active power from the source. The consumers always takes active power from the source. Therefore, the elements which are absorbing active power, the elements which are absorbing active power from the source is, are nothing but the loads. Therefore, these are the loads, they are absorbing, 
they are absorbing the active power. They are absorbing the active power from the system. Is it clear? So the elements which are able to deliver are generators. The elements which are able to absorb the active power are the loads. Are the loads. And in between, these are the transferring elements. These are the transferring elements. So by satisfying their losses, after that, the remaining will, they will transfer. What are those? Transformer, transmission line. Transformer and transmission line. Th those are only power transferring elements. Power transferring elements. So the major elements are generators and the loads. And the loads. Now, coming to the generators. Coming to the generators, what are the types of generators we are having? We need to start from here. What are the types of generators we are having? The types of generators we are having are based on the power output, nature of power supply. Nature of power supply, these are two types. What are those? What are those? DC and AC. DC and AC. So there are DC sources and AC sources. We can say DC generators and AC generators. DC generators and AC generators. So let me write here. These are based on the power output or nature of power supply. These are categorized as two. One is DC generators. DC generators. And the second one is AC generators. AC generators. Is it clear? And what are the types of AC generators? What are the types of AC generators? The AC generators are again categorized. The AC generators are again categorized based on the speed. They are constant speed generators and variable speed generators. Constant speed generators, we are calling them as synchronous generators. Synchronous generators. And whereas variable speed generators, we are calling them as asynchronous generators. Asynchronous generators. So that I am writing the various types of AC generators are first one is synchronous generator which is a constant speed generator synchronous generator and the second one is asynchronous asynchronous generator best example is the induction generator induction generator so that I am writing here directly the induction generator induction generator so there are two types of ac generators one is a synchronous generator and the other one is the induction generator induction generator is it clear now how can how can we categorize them what is the basic difference between them what is the basic difference between them why because all are generators only all are generators only every generator is able to deliver the active power Every generator is able to deliver the active power. That means, if you write what a DC generator is capable of, a DC generator is able to capable of, it can deliver a positive value of active power. It can deliver a positive value of active power. What is a synchronous generator is capable of? It is also able to deliver a positive value of active power. Ah, what about induction generator? It is also able to deliver a positive value of active power. Sir, everything is same only, na? why are you giving the difference? Why are you giving the difference? Right See here, the difference comes, the difference comes in the reactive power concept. Reactive power concept. Is it clear? The reactive power in the system is necessary for working of each and every machine. The reactive power in the system is necessary for working of each and every component in the system. The reactive power in the sense, creating useful flux in the system. Creating useful flux in the system. That means, if you want to convert electrical energy to another energy, or if there is any energy conversion in electrical domain, if there is any energy conversion in electrical domain, or electrical engineering, medium should be the magnetic medium. In between medium should be the magnetic medium. That means, in case of generator, in case of generator, you are converting mechanical energy into the electrical energy. In between, you are having magnetic medium. And whereas, in case of motors, in case of motors, you are converting 
electrical energy into the uh, mechanical energy in between medium is the magnetic energy. Everywhere, everywhere, every element in the power system always deals with, always deals with magnetic domain, magnetic domain. So dealing with magnetic domain means dealing with Faraday's laws, Faraday's laws. That means if you want to convert the energy, energy in electrical domain or mechanical domain, we need to satisfy the Faraday's laws. Satisfying the Faraday's laws means we need to induce the EMF, we need to induce the EMF by rotating the elements, by rotating the elements or by providing sinusoidal supply. Not only sinusoidal, you can say time varying supply, time varying supply. So whenever there are rotating parts or whenever there are time varying components or time varying, uh, uh, we can say voltages and currents, time varying voltages and currents. So at that situation, we can create the reactive pole. We can create the reactive pole. Therefore, a DC system, whatever we are discussing here, a DC system is unable to provide a time varying flux, a time varying flux. Therefore, the reactive power supplied by the DC generator, the reactive power supplied by the DC generator is always zero, zero. That means the DC generator is unable to, is unable to deliver the reactive power or absorb the reactive power. It cannot do anything in terms of reactive power. Therefore, the reactive power delivered or absorbed both will be equivalent to zero, will be equivalent to zero for DC generator, for DC generator. Are you getting the point here? In case of DC generator, there is no concept of reactive power. Clear? Now, ah, what is the basic difference between synchronous generators and the induction generators? What is the basic difference between synchronous generators and induction generators? See here, a synchronous generator is having excitation, is having excitation. So it is connected with a DC source, DC source, so that the DC source is providing excitation to the synchronous generator. By controlling the excitation of the synchronous generator, by controlling the excitation of the synchronous generator, the synchronous generator is able to, the synchronous generator is able to, listen carefully, the synchronous generator is able to deliver the reactive power or absorb the reactive power or it can stay calm, it can stay calm. So one of the greatest advantage of the synchronous generator is controlling the excitation of that mission. By controlling the excitation of the synchronous generator, we can make that generator to deliver the reactive power, to absorb the reactive power, otherwise stay calm, or otherwise stay calm. Is it clear? Now see here. Therefore, this synchronous generator is able to, is able to deliver a positive value of reactive power or, or it can absorb, it can absorb a positive value of reactive power. The synchronous generator is able to deliver a positive value of reactive power or it is able to absorb a positive value of reactive power. It cannot do both at a time. So once it is delivering a positive value means it is not going to absorb. So it is going to absorb a negative value. You can write, I am giving plus 2 means I am taking minus 2. That is the meaning of that one. So I am writing both are positive which means that it can do any one at a time. It can deliver or it can absorb. Positive values. Positive values. Are you getting the point? So please listen carefully. Synchronous generator is able to deliver the reactive power or absorb the reactive power whenever we are controlling the excitation of the synchronous generator, which is also called as alternator. Which is also called as alternator. Now, coming to the induction generator, coming to the induction generator or asynchronous generator or variable speed generator, variable speed generator. This induction generator is not at all having any excitations, is not at all having any excitations. So we are unable to control the excitation of the, that mission. We are unable to control the excitation of that mission. And what is the problem? It is unable to induce its own reactive power also, its own reactive power also. So that if you want to work with induction generator, first of all, supply reactive power to induction generator, then switch on. Then only it will give active power to the system. It will give the active power to the system. Are you getting the point? If you want to work with induction generator, someone need to supply reactive power to that one. 
ద నేమ్ ఇట్స్ ఎ జనరేటర్ ద నేమ్ ఇట్స్ ఏ జనరేటర్ ఈవెన్ ద ఇట్స్ ఎ జనరేటర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అనేబుల్ టు వర్క్ అనేబుల్ టు వర్క్ వితౌట్ ఎనీ రియాక్టివ్ పవర్ వితౌట్ ఎనీ రియాక్టివ్ పవర్ సమ్ వన్ నీడ్స్ టు సప్లై రియాక్టివ్ పవర్ టు దట్ వన్ దట్ ఈస్ ద మేజర్ డ్రాబ్యాక్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇండక్షన్ జనరేటర్ దేర్ ఫోర్ దేర్ ఫోర్ దిస్ ఇండక్షన్ జనరేటర్ ఆల్వేస్ ఆల్వేస్ అబ్జార్బ్ సమ్ అమౌంట్ ఆఫ్ రియాక్టివ్ పవర్ దట్ ఈస్ అట్ పాజిటివ్ వాల్యూ క్లియర్ ఇట్ ఆల్వేస్ అబ్జార్బ్ ద రియాక్టివ్ పవర్ బై అబ్జార్బింగ్ ద రియాక్టివ్ పవర్ ఇట్ కెన్ డెలివర్ ద యాక్టివ్ పవర్ ఇట్ కెన్ డెలివర్ ద యాక్టివ్ పవర్ విచ్ ఈస్ ద మే మేజర్ డ్రాబ్యాక్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇండక్షన్ జనరేటర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ హ్యావింగ్ సెవరల్ అడ్వాంటేజెస్ వై బికాస్ వి నో నీడ్ టు మెయింటైన్ కాన్స్టెంట్ స్పీడ్ వై బికాస్ ఇట్ ఇస్ ఆల్రెడీ వేరియబుల్ స్పీడ్ జనరేటర్ అండ్ వీ నో నో నీడ్ టు మెయింటైన్ సింక్రనైజ్ ఇఫ్ యూ వాంట్ కనెక్ట్ ఇండక్షన్ జనరేటర్ విత్ అనదర్ ఇండక్షన్ జనరేటర్ నో నీడ్ టు మెయింటైన్ నో నీడ్ టు సింక్రనైజ్ దెమ్ బట్ సింక్రోన జనరేటర్ వెన్ అవర్ ఇఫ్ యూ వాంట్ టు ఆపరేట్ సింక్రోన జనరేటర్స్ ఇన్ పార్లల్ దెర్ ఆర్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ డిఫికల్టీస్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు ఫేస్ సో సింక్రోనైజేషన్ ప్రాసెస్ వెరీ వెరీ డిఫికల్ట్ ప్రాసెస్ వీ వీ నీడ్ టు మ్యాచ్ ద ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీస్ వీ నీడ్ టు మ్యాచ్ ద ఫేస్ సీక్వెన్సెస్ అండ్ వీ నీడ్ టు మ్యాచ్ ద టర్మినల్ వోల్టేజెస్ రైట్ దెర్ ఆర్ సెవరల్ థింగ్స్ వీ నీడ్ టు మెయింటైన్ ఇన్ కేస్ ఆఫ్ సింక్రోనస్ జనరేటర్స్ సింక్రోనస్ జనరేటర్స్ గాట్ ఇట్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ నౌ సో దీస్ ఆర్ ద జనరేటర్స్ సో దట్ ఫ్రమ్ దిస్ డిస్కషన్ from this discussion i am giving star rating for synchronous generator i am giving star rating for synchronous generator why we can give star rating it is the best generator in the universe it is the best generator in the universe therefore i am giving star rating for the synchronous generator star rating for the synchronous generator is it clear everyone so that is the discussion on generators that is the discussion on generators and coming to the loads coming to the loads yeah so now we have to discuss about the loads here uh, what are the loads you are having loads are nothing but motors majorly that we have one conclusion here loads are nothing but motors majorly uh, what are the types of motors what are the types of motors based on power input to them based on power input to them again they are categorized as dc motors and ac motors again they are also dc motors and ac motors based on what are the power, what is the power input giving to them therefore we are having therefore we are having what are those dc motors and ac motors ac motors ah and again what are the types of ac motors there are again two types of ac motors similarly to that of ac generators what are those constant speed motors and variable speed motors what are those what are the ac motors we are having constant speed motor which is nothing but synchronous motor synchronous motor and the other one is induction motor induction motor induction motor constant speed and variable speed constant speed and variable speed synchronous and asynchronous synchronous and asynchronous got it everyone now coming to the dc motors a generator itself is unable to deliver any amount of reactive power how can a motor how can a motor so <coughs> with respect to dc machines with respect to dc machines the reactive power absorbed or delivered by generator or motor both will be zero now what is the basic difference between them what is the basic difference between them so initially see here a dc motor it is a load which is able to absorb absorb a positive value of active power and what about synchronous motor which is able to absorb a positive value of active power and induction motor which is able to absorb a positive value of active power why right? because the basic difference between generator and motor is whenever you are categorizing generators and motors so the basic category is always done based on active power so the machines which are able to the machines which are able to 
give active power. The machines which are able to give active power are generators. The machines which are able to absorb the active power are motors. Welcome back students. Now, see here, we are categorizing the motors. We are categorizing the motors. So, all the motors are having the active power absorption. The basic difference is coming from what? Reactive power. The basic difference is coming from reactive power. So, coming to the DC motors, the DC motors are unable to absorb or deliver any amount of reactive power. Any amount of reactive power. So, therefore, this motor in terms of reactive power which is equal to 0. It is unable to deliver or it is unable to absorb any amount of reactive power. We know about that one. Why? Because it is a direct current motor. It is a direct current motor. And coming to the AC motors, coming to the AC motors, the synchronous motors are having the excitation again. The synchronous motors are having the excitation again. So that we can control the excitation of the synchronous motors also. We can control the excitation of the synchronous motors also. Therefore, we can operate the synchronous motor. We can operate the synchronous motor by, right? So, we can make the synchronous motor to deliver the reactive power, to absorb the reactive power, as take up, as take up. 
Are you getting the point? The motor, the synchronous motor, only motor in the universe, the only motor in the universe, which is able to deliver reactive power to the system, which is able to deliver reactive power to the system. What is that? The synchronous motor, the synchronous motor. So come here. So we are controlling the excitation of the synchronous motor so that it can deliver some positive value of reactive power, make it as a separate one, the only motor in the universe which is able to deliver reactive power. And as it is a motor, it can absorb. It can absorb, right? It is absorbing some positive value of reactive power. It is absorbing some positive value of reactive power. Clear? And coming to the induction motor, generator itself, it's not doing. How can I? How it is possible to me? Right? Why? Well, because I does not have any excitation. How? You are expecting reactive power from me. So my generator is, asked, is not at all delivering any amount of reactive power. How you are expecting from me? So that the induction motor is unable to deliver any amount of reactive power. It is absorbing. It is absorbing some positive value. Some positive value. Are you getting the point here? DC machines, generator or motor, generator or motor, whatever it may be, reactive power is zero. Reactive power is zero. Synchronous machines, generator or motor, generator or motor, so they can deliver reactive power, they can absorb the reactive power, they can stay calm, they can stay calm. And one more thing, induction, gener induction machines, generator or motor, it has to absorb reactive power, it has to absorb the reactive power. That is the final conclusion you can give, that is the final conclusion you can give from machines, from machines, I am not saying generator or motor, so with respect to reactive power concept, we can separate the machines also. We can separate the machines also. So the only possible machines which are able to deliver, uh, deliver the reactive power are synchronous machines. Synchronous machines. Now tell me, now tell me how to give me which is the best motor in the universe? Which is the best motor in the universe? Probably, most probably synchronous motor. Most probably synchronous motor. But you have to understand one thing that motor is a load. Motor is a load. Uh, load is at consumer point. Load is at consumer point. Uh, will the consumer want to operate, uh, 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 control the excitation? Will the consumer want to control the excitation? No, never. He don't want to control the excitation. He wants what? I want a single phase induction motor. Which? I don't know about that one. I want a fan. I want a fan. The fan has to give air. That's only. That's only. That, what I want from the consumer point? So I am buying a fan, it has to work and it has to give wind some to me. That's only, that's the point of, point of uh, <coughs> observation from the consumer point. But the source or the electrical engineers, what they are thinking? They are thinking that uh, by synchronous motor, we, you can control the excitation, therefore you can supply the reactive power. Is it possible to satisfy consumer? No, we are unable to do that. Is it clear? Consumer always wants what they want, what they want. So that they always want so his needs at economic rates. His needs at economic rates. So that economic aspect is the major criteria from the load point of view or the from consumer point of view. From consumer point of view. Are you getting the point? So that the consumer always wants to buy, always wants to buy a cheap motor or the most economical motor. Most economical motor. In very good terminology, you can say. You cannot say cheap, it's a most economical motor. So most economical motor, what is the most economical motor? Which is the simplest motor, which is easy to analyze, which is self-starting, uh, which is easy to construct. What is that? I'm giving the star rating again. What is that? Induction motor. Induction motor. I already told you, 90% of the motors, 90% of the loads are the motors. 90% of the loads are the motors. In that, in that, 98% are induction motors. In that, 98% are induction motors. Are you getting the point here? So even though the synchronous motor is looking somewhat good, but it is a costly motor. It is a costly motor. To do the same work, to do the same work, the induction motor cost is very, very less compared to that of the synchronous motor. Synchronous motor. So that from here, 
we are getting one conclusion that the best motor in the universe is best generator in the universe is synchronous generator the best motor or most useful motor in the universe is the induction motor induction motor so from now onwards up to the end of power systems from now onwards up to the end of power system starting is synchronous generator ending is induction motor ending is induction motor got it these are the conclusions we are having now coming to the single line diagram we are having the transfer elements what are those transformer and transmission lines transformers and transmission lines is it clear so whenever we are using the transformers here the transformers are basically used to step up the voltage levels or step down the voltage levels step up the voltage levels or step down the voltage levels so i am not going into the uh, details of transformers or the transmission lines in this class so it may be discussed later so in this class i am just giving the application what is the application of transformer it is used to step up the voltage levels or step down the voltage levels step down the voltage levels why we need to step up why we need to step down these are the questions basic questions sir why what is the importance of transformer uh, can i go directly transmit to the load by using transmission line why because the, every time i cannot take generator to the load center so that i need to take some transferring mediums so that why transmission line is sufficient why are you taking the transformer because because whenever we are stepping up the voltages whenever we are stepping up the voltages there are lot of advantages we are going to get the advantages i am giving you in simple in simple short form the power losses in the system can be reduced right and the conductor size we can reduce the cross sectional area of the conductor can be reduced the volume of the conductor can be reduced the efficiency of the transmission can be improved the efficiency of the transmission can be improved so because of all these advantages because of all these advantages we are going for transformer we are stepping up the voltages so that one conclusion we have to keep it in mind that transmission of electrical energy transmission of electrical energy should always be done at high voltage levels should always be done at high voltage levels even though the generation voltages are 11 kilovolts to 33 kilovolts 11 kilovolts to 33 kilovolts we are stepping that 11 kilovolts to 33 kilovolts to very high voltages because we need to get all these advantages what we discussed what are those power losses will be reduced efficiency will be improved volume of conductor will be reduced cross section area of the conductor will be reduced so all these are the advantages of having high voltages and if we go deep into the power system analysis so whenever you are increasing the voltage level it can also improve the stability of the system it can also improve the stability of the system so all these are the advantages so that we are placing the transformer sir what is the need of this transformer here what is the need of this transformer here this is a step down transformer right why because the loads are very small those loads are unable to withstand that much amount of huge voltages so uh, 200 kilo volts what is the load that can take 200 kilo volts is it possible our we are having small bulbs single phase motors single phase acs right and three phase motors all this we are having so these loads are unable to withstand that much amount of huge voltages so that what we have to do now reduce the voltage levels step by step right some so there are some industries large industries they can take 66 kilo volts also so that place a transformer step down 200 kilo volts to 66 and again go uh, later on we are having some small industries they can take 11 kilo volts so that place a transformer there step down to 220 kilo volts to 11 kilo volts go again continue and again there are some agricultural loads they can take 400 volts or 440 volts three phase so that place a transformer step down from 11 kilo volts or 200 kilo volts to 440 volts 440 volts so however whatever you need so do that reduce and in single phase so in three phase system take each and every line from 440 volts so you can get single phase load single phase loads so you can connect the single phase load to a single phase and the neutral wire provided under the system so this is the complete structure of the power system complete structure of the power system now now we are entering into the ratings of these elements ratings of these elements the ratings of the elements should be known i already told you the ratings of the elements should be known to understand what they have given there 
if you go for a power plant if you go for a power plant right so that means if you go for raichur power plant raichur power plant so in the raichur power plant they are given uh, it is delivering some 1500 megawatt at a voltage of 33 kilovolts they are saying uh, what is that 33 what is that 1500 we need to understand we need to understand are they are giving a single phase ratings are they are giving three phase ratings are they are giving peak voltages or rms voltages or average voltages or that power is a instantaneous power or the average power what is that power what is that power we need to understand while solving the problem we need all this data whenever we are studying that one no need to understand that one but whenever we are solving a problem in electrical engineering we need we need to understand what they have given clear everyone therefore i am going for the rating of an element so before going for the rating how we can give the electrical rating of an element how we can give the electrical rating an elephant see here we can give the electrical rating of an element like this like this see here the electrical rating of an element of an electrical element of an electrical element always depends upon the temperature rise suppose if you are working on that mission or if you are working on or working with that element for some time so there may be heat dissipation oh the heat what is the reason for the heat what are the reasons for the heat we need to search for them if you continue the same process how much time the machine with, can withstand that one the machine, machine can withstand that much amount of heat all these things we have to search right therefore the electrical rating of an element always depends upon the temperature rise of the element temperature rise of the element now remember the temperature rise always depends upon the losses in the system the temperature rise always depends upon the losses in the system. And what are the losses we are having? Major losses. Not small, small losses. I am considering. What are the major losses in the system? The major losses are only two. Copper losses and iron losses. Copper losses and iron losses. So we are having only two losses majorly. There may be small, small various losses also. But major loss are copper losses and iron losses. Though that the copper losses always depends upon current and the iron losses always depends upon the voltage voltage so the iron losses depends upon the voltage and the copper losses depends upon the current and the loss does not depends upon the operating power factor the losses never depends upon the operating power factor it may be lagging load or it may be leading load or it may be resistive load what will be the load what will be the load the losses always depends upon what? Depends upon what? Current and voltage ratings. Current and voltage ratings. So that from voltage V from current A. So we need to give volt ampere rating. We need to give volt ampere rating. Therefore, almost all the elements in power system are rated with volt ampere rating. Almost all. Generator, transformer, transmission lines but not the load load is it's the consumer consumer satisfaction whatever he want he want to buy i want to buy an incandescent bulb i can buy 60 watt bulb right i want to buy a, a, a mixer grinder a thousand megawatt or thousand kilowatt or thousand watt whatever it may be i i can buy so it depends upon the consumer satisfaction but remaining all power system elements should be rated with volt ampere rating if the size increases kva rating if the size increases MVA rating. Kilo volt ampere, mega volt ampere based on the size of the system. So in our power system, here in our power system, we are dealing with mega volt amperes. Mega volt amperes. Why? Because our power system majorly deals with a large systems, large voltages and large currents. Large currents. High power ratings. Therefore, it will be mega volt ampere rating. Mega volt ampere rating we are going to give for a power system element <coughs> power system element now we individually go and check what are the ratings of the remaining elements all the elements clear have you understood this the rating of an element will be in volt ampere kilo volt ampere and mega volt ampere this is the reason so they can ask why so there are several times they have asked the question why the rating of the transformer is always kva rating or mva rating we need to give. Why? Because the losses always depends upon the voltage and current 
then never depends upon the power factor. Clear? Now, <clears throat> coming to the first element, ah, the best element, the best source. What is the best source here? Synchronous generator. The rating of the synchronous generator. Right? While studying about the synchronous generator, first one already discussed, what is that? The first rating is three phase apparent power rating. Apparent power rating. So, what is the unit of apparent power? Volt ampere. Right? As the size increases, it will be mega volt ampere. Mega volt ampere. So, what are the powers we are having? Real power, reactive power, apparent power. So, what is the unit of real power? Real power or active power. Real power or active power. So, what are the units? We can represent in wattage, watts. And what about the reactive power? What about the reactive power? We can represent this one in, we can represent this one in volt ampere reactive. Volt ampere reactive. Where? And what about the unit of apparent power? Apparent power. Old ampere. Old ampere. Right? I think you know all these things. Just I am recalling just only. Recalling just. Right? See here. The first rating for a synchronous generator should be. The first rating for a synchronous generator should be. Uh, three phase apparent power rating which should be given in MVA. And the second rating is. Remember here. Line to line. Understand this one. Full load RMS voltage rating. Full load RMS voltage rating. Understand this one also. Full load RMS voltage. Full load RMS voltage rating we are giving. See here, whenever we are having a generator, whenever we are having a generator, this generator actually is represented in single phase form like this. This is the single phase representation of the generator. This is the single phase representation of the generator. For this generator, we are giving the terminal voltage V. So, this is terminal voltage V. Where we, this is the line voltage, this is the phase voltage. So, here we are representing the line voltage. Here we are representing the phase voltage. Whatever it may be, I am giving one conclusion here. Try to understand this. Suppose, for this generator, whenever we are connecting the load, whenever we are connecting the load, this is the load I am saying. Whenever this load is increased, whenever this load is increased, the current flowing through the generator will also increase. The current flowing through the generator will also increase. Therefore, the drop in this element also increase. The drop in the internal impedance of the generator will also increase. So, we know already we have discussed about the armature reaction. Armature reaction. In the armature reaction, whenever the armature current increases, the armature reaction increases so that it will reduce the terminal voltage of the alternator. Therefore, whenever the drop is increased, automatically the terminal voltage will be reduced. The terminal voltage will be reduced. Similarly, whenever, for this one, whenever the load is increased, automatically the terminal voltage will have a small drop. Small drop. Therefore, the terminal voltage of the generator is depending on the load condition. Is depending on the load condition. Are you getting the point? It is depending on the load condition. Therefore, we are always giving connect full load and tell me the voltage there. Connect full load and tell me the voltage there. That is the rating. That is the rating. So that for a synchronous generator, we are giving line to line full load, full load RMS voltage rating. RMS voltage rating we are giving. Suppose if this generator is rated for, if this generator is rated for 100 MVA, 100 MVA, 11 kilo volts, 100 MVA, 11 kilo volts in the sense, what is the meaning of that one? That 100 MVA is the three phase apparent power rating. That 100 MVA is the three phase apparent power rating. And that 11 kilo volts is the line to line full load RMS voltage rating. Line to line 
full load RMS voltage rating. You should have to remember. You should have to remember. What they have given for generator? They have given two ratings. Voltage rating and MVA rating. Voltage rating and MVA rating. Is it clear everyone? Now we are going for the second element. One of the most important element, the complex element is the power plant. Power plant. Ah, we have to give the rating of the power plant. We have to give the rating of the power plant. Clear? Power plant is nothing but a generating station. Power plant is nothing but a generating station. In that generating station, we have connected several generators in parallel. All these are the generators. Generator G1, generator G2 and generator G3. So all these are the generators we are connected in parallel. In parallel. Is it clear? Remember here, there is no condition that, there is no condition that each generator, each generator have to give the same MVA rating. There is no condition like that, right? This generator may be rated for 100 MVA. This generator may be rated for 150 MVA. And this generator may be rated for 200 MVA. 200 MVA. There is no condition that we have to operate all the same rated generators in parallel. What is the condition we are having? Terminal voltage you have to maintain constant. Terminal voltage you have to maintain constant. That means all the generators are having same line to line full load RMS voltage rating. So that this is fixed. What is that? Line to line full load RMS voltage rating. That has been fixed. But coming to the rating of power plant, the power plant always depends upon the rating of the turbine. Rating of the turbine which is present in the power plant. A turbine is a mechanical element. It's not an electrical element. A turbine is a mechanical element. Mechanical elements does not know about the reactive power. There is no need to generate or there is no need to absorb reactive power from the turbine side. What a turbine can do? It can take some form of energy, convert into rotations, mechanical domain. What will be the form of energy will give? I will take, I will give it into the mechanical domain. Hydro, convert into mechanical. Steam, convert into mechanical. Gas, convert into mechanical. Solar, whatever it may be, whatever it may be. If you are giving it to the turbine, if you are giving it to the turbine, it can convert, it can convert into the mechanical domain. Not the solar, eh? it can convert into the mechanical domain. Is it clear everyone? Now, now, coming to here, coming to here, as the turbine is a mechanical element, it know only about the active power. It does not know about the reactive power. Reactive power. Therefore, the power plant rating is always in megawatt. Megawatt, not in MVA. Not in MVA. Search for the ratings of your power plants. Search for Raichur power plant. What are the power plants you are having in the Karnataka state? Search for the ratings of the power plants. All are rated with megawatt rating only. They will never give the MVA rating. The reason is the turbine. Reason is the turbine. Therefore, the rating of the power plant is always should be in megawatt. Three phase active power rating in megawatt. Three phase active power rating in megawatt. So for a generator, they have given three phase active power rating in megawatt. Now coming to here, I want to give you one more very, very important conclusion here. Just listen carefully here. A generator or a power plant, whenever we are having here, we have connected several generators in parallel. This is a bus or a node. This is a bus or node where several generators are connected. Where several generators are connected. So that I can call this bus as generator bus. I can call this bus as generator bus. Is it clear? At this bus, what are the quantities we, have, we know here? They have given the active power value. They have given the voltage magnitude value. They have given the voltage magnitude value. Are you getting the point here students? Are you getting the point? For a generator bus where several generators are connected in parallel, the rating itself is giving P value and V value. P value and the magnitude of the voltage value. 
so it may be 11 kilo volts or it may be 15 kilo volts or it may be 33 kilo volts whatever it may be whatever it may be so they have given the voltage magnitude value and the three phase active power value therefore for a generator bus in the nameplate details, details itself they have given the value of p and v now while going for the load flow analysis while going for the load flow analysis a generator bus is always called as a pv bus a generator bus is always called as a pv bus we know we have studied about the load flow studies in our academics why a generator bus is always called as a pv bus why because its nameplate details its nameplate details they are available there go there take the data take the data therefore a generator bus is always called as a pv bus is always called as a pv bus remember this is for load flow studies load flow studies load flow studies is it clear everyone is it clear everyone i think it is clear it is one of the most important point in load flow studies a generator bus can always be treated as a pv bus pv bus coming to the next element coming to the next element ah what is the next element you are having ah one of the highly rated and highly important mission highly important mission we have discussed what are the advantages of placing a transformer in the system see here what are this it is a transformer it is a transformer again the transformer is rated for apparent power rating in mva apparent power rating in mva but while giving the voltage rating of the transformer while giving the voltage rating of the transformer the transformer has two different windings two different windings transformer is having constant power from primary to the secondary but it may not have it may not have two same voltage levels it is having two different voltage levels so that we need to give the two voltage ratings we need to give the two voltage ratings from primary to the secondary from primary to the secondary therefore whenever we are giving the rating of the transformer remember here so this is the transformer may be having based on the number of turns n1 and n2 we are going to get a voltage of e1 and e2 we are going to get a voltage of e1 and e2 therefore e1 e2 always depends upon the number of turns number of turns the e1 e2 never depends upon the terminal voltage or the load condition it may be open circuit or it may be loads or resistive load capacity load inductive load what will be the load you connect here this e2 is independent of the situation is independent of the situation whatever the source you have connected here whatever the source you have connected here if it is able to induce this much voltage it automatically induces this one in the secondary it automatically induces this much amount of voltage in the secondary so that whenever this voltage is independent of the load condition whenever this voltage is independent of the load condition why are you giving the full load voltage why are you giving the full load voltage in the rating itself in the rating itself so that the rating itself should be the no load voltage rating the no load voltage rating therefore whenever you are giving the rating of the transformer e1 by e2 e1 by e2 should be the no load rms primary voltage rating the no load rms secondary voltage rating the no load rms primary voltage rating the no load rms secondary voltage rating remember both are line to line values in a three phase system so don't forget about that one it is a line to line rms voltage and also it's a no load voltage for a transformer and make a conclusion that make a conclusion that transformer is the only element in power system in the entire power system which is rated for no load voltage which is rated for no load voltage rating no load voltage rating so let me write that conclusion transformer is the only element transformer is the only element 
which is rated for which is rated for no load voltage rating no load voltage rating no load voltage rating right and coming to the next element so what is the next element you are having the next element is transmission line one more transferring element the transmission line so the transmission line is also a simple uh, power transmitting element it's also rated for apparent power rating in mva apparent power rating in mva and line to line full load rms voltage rating therefore for a transmission line also the terminal voltage always depends upon the load condition so whenever the load current increases the drop in the transmission line increases therefore the, there will be change in the terminal voltage of the transmission line therefore for transmission line voltage rating also connect the full load and give the rating connect the full load and give the rating so that <coughs> for transmission line also we are giving the full load rms voltage rating line to line in a three phase system in a three phase power system so it's a line to line full load rms voltage rating line to line full load rms voltage rating for a transmission line clear everyone now i'm going for the next element what is the next element rating of the load rating of the load we know it depends upon the consumer whatever he want he will buy that one so that we need to we are able to give the ratings of that load also what are those the load is always rated in megawatt or kilowatt or watts or watts why because incandescent bulb rating is in 60 watt and led bulb ratings are 9 watts or 14 watts it always depends upon the wattage rating and also for the load we can give the operating power factor we can give the operating power factor what is that the load may be operating under 0.6 power factor lagging or unity power factor load or 0.8 power factor leading like that we can give or otherwise sometimes we can give the reactive power rating itself we can give the reactive power rating itself therefore on the nameplate details of the load on the nameplate details of the load active power and reactive power will be given or active power and power factor will be given active power and power factor or active power and reactive power got the point so whenever the load is represented two ways of representation one is active power p and cos phi the operating power factor or whenever they are representing they can give s is equal to p plus jq they can give the active power rating and the reactive power rating the reactive power rating both you can give so that is the rating of the load that is the rating of the load now coming to here whenever we are having a bus i am calling this one as a bus at this bus there are several loads are connected in parallel there are several loads connected in parallel all the loads are rated for what active power p and reactive power q all the loads are rated for active power p and reactive power q so if you search at this bus if you search at this bus whenever we are having a supplying the loads all the loads the system has to know what is the total amount of active power i have to supply what is the total amount of reactive power i have to supply please give me the question mark the system will ask you what is the total amount of active power and what is the total amount of reactive power please specify that one i will try my level best to supply them i will try my level best to supply them are you getting the point here say that at the load at the load bus we are calling this bus as the load bus we are calling this bus as the load bus at the load bus what are the quantities we know what are the quantities we know active power and reactive power active power and reactive power therefore a load bus is also called as a pq bus in load flow studies the load bus is also called as a pq bus in load flow studies therefore this load bus is also called as a pq bus this load bus is also called as a pq bus in the power system several times they are asking what are the quantities that are specified for a load bus right p and q are specified which are for which type of the bus in the given options what are the quantities that are specified in the generator bus right remember 
which are very 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 important points which are very 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 important points are you getting the point so these are the ratings of the power system elements ratings of the power system elements so i think you got some more extra points from this class part of the discussion we have done here what is the discussion we have done here so ratings of the power system elements of two hurdles and also discussion on the single line diagram so we got one conclusion that the best generator is the synchronous generator the best motor is the what is the best motor actually the best motor is synchronous motor but most useful motor from the consumer point of view is the induction motor induction motor right so somebody if you ask if they ask what is the best motor in the universe you, you can give from the cost point of view it is the induction motor it you can buy uh, that one at very low cost very low cost construct that one very simply right analysis very simply it is a self starting motor self starting motor is it clear so because of all these advantages we can say the best motor is the induction motor not the synchronous motor synchronous motor is having only one advantage what is that it is the only motor which can supply the reactive power which can supply the reactive power what i can do that one with that one every time what i can do with that one every time i want separate things i know i don't want any reactive power clear i want uh, from the load side i want to pull the uh, water right so wind there are the things i want there are the things i want i don't want reactive power whatever you do you can do so give me these things at low cost give me these things at low cost so with respect to that one induction motor is the best one induction motor is the best one we can say is it clear everyone now coming to the question discussion so one of the previous one mark gate question previous one mark gate question and this question is repeated in many 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 state electricity boards engineering services and psus right see that what is the question the rated voltage of a three phase power system what is the rated voltage of a three phase power system now to get the conclusion about this one what is the rating of synchronous generator line to line rms voltage uh, what is the rating of transformer line to line rms voltage what is the rating of transmission line line to line rms voltage uh, it may be full load or no load what is the voltage we are giving line to line rms voltage rating the rating of entire power system is always in line to line rms voltage if it is three phase if it is three phase right so that you can get the clarity now it is rms line to line voltage rms line to line voltage so that we can get the clarity now we can get the clarity now the power system is always rated with line to line rms voltage line to line rms voltage got it everyone now coming to the voltage regulation calculation coming to the voltage regulation calculation many students are having a doubt sir while calculating the voltage regulation i am having a doubt that v no load minus v full load divided by divided by what i am having a doubt ah it is no load or full load it is no load or full load i am having a doubt again we, i have given the clarity for you what is that one what is the rating of the generator it is a full load voltage rating take full load voltage rating why because it is already known for you it is available on the name plate details what is the rating of the transformer no load voltage rating reference in the reference take no load voltage for transmission line full load voltage available take that one take that one are you getting the point for generator and transmission line the denominator should be the denominator should be the full load voltage full load voltage for transformer it should be the no load voltage why because they are the references references means the known quantities the known quantities are you getting the point here i think it is one of the valid point for you from the ratings from the ratings from the rating itself you are able to identify or we are able to solve some of the questions some of the questions here now coming to here importance of the power factor importance of the power factor a power factor plays a very very important role in power system power factor plays a very very important role in the power system what is power factor what is power factor it is the ratio of active power to the apparent power it is the ratio of active power to the apparent power is it clear it is the phase angle cosine of the phase angle difference between voltage and current for an element for an element if you consider a load for that for that load take the voltage and take the current the phase angle difference between 
voltage and current. Cosine of the phase angle difference between voltage and current for the same element. For the same element is called as the power factor. Now, what is the importance of that power factor? If you want to know the importance of the power factor, we need to take some cases here. We need to take some cases. So, there are two cases we can take. Consider a load, consider a load which is operating at low load condition, low power factor, not load, which is operating at low power factor condition and take the same load, improve the power factor, improve the power factor, compare these two situations. Now, what are the advantages we can get? What are the advantages we can get? See here, I am taking a load, I am taking a load which is operating at low power factor. I am improving the power factor of the same load, I am not changing the load. Suppose I am taking a fan. The same fan I am taking again. I am improving the power factor of this one by connecting some devices. I don't know up to now. Later on I will tell what are the devices which are used to improve the power factor. But up to now I am saying here, take the load, operate it low power factor, take the same load, improve the power factor and compare these two cases. We will see there are very very good advantages we are having with power factor. We are having with power factor. Now we will see here, first one, so let me take Case 1, case 1, low power factor, low power factor. So low power factor means we can take a source here and we can take the load here. We can take the load here. This load is operating at low power factor and this load requires a voltage of 1 volt and a power of 1 watt, a resistance of 1 ohm and a power factor of 0 0.5 lagging C. Lagging C. So that is the power factor condition of the load, of the load. So voltage is 1 volt. Power is 1 watt, resistance is 1 ohm, cos phi is 0.5. Now, we know the active power formula. We know the active power formula. And remember here, for this loading condition, what is the size of the source? What is the size of the source? We have to compare. Now, see here, active power P is equivalent to Vi cos phi in a single phase system. So, given is a single phase system, so that I am taking P is equivalent to Vi cos phi. V i cos phi. From this one, I can calculate the current which is flowing in the system. The current i is equivalent to P by V cos phi. The current i is equivalent to P by V cos phi. They are given P is 1, V is 1, cos phi is 0.5. So, 1 by 0.5 it is 2 amperes. 1 by 0.5 it is 2 amperes. Clear? So that whenever you have calculated the current, the load is having some resistance so that I can calculate the losses. Therefore, the power loss, the power loss, what is the power loss? I square into R. So which is nothing but 2 square into 1, which is nothing but 4 watts, which is nothing but 4 watts. Now see here, to supply a load of 1 watt, to supply a load of 1 watt, the losses in the system are 4 watts. The last in the system are 4 watts. Are you getting the point here? To supply a load of 1 watt, we are loss, we are giving a, we are supplying a loss of 4 watts. Are you getting the point here? Right? Now, we can calculate the reactive power also. What is the reactive power? Q is equal to Vi sin phi. Where V is 1 volt, I is 2 amperes, sin phi. When cos phi is 0.5, angle will be 60 degrees. So that sin 60 will be root 3 by 2. I am writing here directly, do not forget about that one, when cos phi is 0.5, 1 by 2, uh, cos 60 is 1 by 2, so that I am calculating sin 60 there, sin 60 is root 3 by 2, so that it will be root 3 volt ampere reactive, volt ampere reactive. Now if you calculate the size of the source, what is the size of the source? It is total size is equivalent to total active power plus j times of total reactive power. Therefore, the total active power, what is the total active power? Power taken by the load and power loss in the system. 
How much it is? 4 plus 1, 5. 5 plus J, the reactive power is root 3 volt ampere. Volt ampere. So up to now, I have done some calculations here. I don't know anything. Uh, why? Because I, I don't have any other person to compare. Now we will take high power factor load, the same load which is we, whose power factor has been improved. I will take that load and I, I, then only I can compare. Then only I can compare. Are you getting the point here? Therefore, I will take a high power factor load. I will take a high power factor load. Then I will compare with this one. Clear? <coughs> now I will take a high power factor load. A high power factor load. Now, in this case, I will take the same load whose power factor is improved. Therefore, the same load, I need to calculate the size of the source. So, same loads, how can I say that? Whose voltage is 1 volt, whose power is 1 watt, whose resistance is 1 ohm and whose power factor is improved to 0.8 lag. So that the power factor has been improved from 0.5 to 0.8. It is more. It is more. 0.8 is more than that of 0.5. It has been improved compared, compared to that of the previous case by adding some devices. We, we will discuss about that one later. Up to now, just get the clarity about power factor. Now, we can calculate the current first of all. See here, the current in the system is equivalent to P by V cos phi. P by V cos phi. Where P is 1 watt, V is 1 volt and cos phi is 0.8. Now, how much it is? How much it is? 1 by 0.8 is 1.25 amperes. 1.25 amperes. Is it clear everyone? Now, after 1.25 amperes, after calculating the current, we can calculate the power loss in the system. Power loss in the system. Now, what about the power loss? What about the power loss? PL is equivalent to I square into R. Now, what is I? What is I? 1.25 square into 1. How much it is? 1.25 square? You will get approximately 1.5625 watts. 1.5625 watts. And after calculating the power losses, we can calculate the reactive power in the system. So what is the reactive power? Vi sin phi. Vi sin phi. Where V is 1 volt, I is 1.25 and sin phi. When cos phi is 0.8, the value of sin phi will be 0.6. When cos phi is 0.8, the value of sin phi will be 0.6. Therefore, 60% of 1.25 will get uh, 0.75 approximately. Volt ampere reactive. Volt ampere reactive. So, up to now, we got this one. We will calculate the size of the source. The total size is total active pore. What is that? 1.562 pi plus 1. It will be 2.562 pi. 5625 plus J 0.7. This is what the calculation I have done. Now, I will compare. I will compare with the previous case. What is the comparison? Just see here. The current which is we have calculated in the previous case, it is 2 amperes. Now, it is only 1.25. So that whenever the power factor is improved, the current supplied by the source will be reduced. What is the advantage of power factor uh, in the given options? The current supplied by the source will be reduced. The current supplied by the source will be reduced. Second one. Previously, the losses are 4 watts. Now it is 1.5625. So that the one more advantage of power factor, the power losses in the system will be reduced. The power loss in the system will be reduced. Whenever power loss are reduced, reduced, efficiency of the system will be improved. Efficiency of the system will be improved. Is it clear? And whenever power factor is improved, reactive power. Previously, it is root 3. Root 3. What is the meaning of root 3? 1.732 var. 1.732 var. Now, how much it is? 0.75 var. 0.75. So that 
the reactive power supplied by the source will also be reduced the reactive power supplied by the source also, also reduced and automatically the size of the source also reduced so whenever the size of the source is reduced automatically the cost of generation will be reduced the burden on the generator will be reduced the extra burden whatever we are facing for the same load will be reduced i'm saying the cost of generation will be reduced right therefore automatically we can reduce the tariff for the consumer we can reduce the tariff for the consumer so these are the advantages we are having what are those current supplied by the source will be reduced second one power loss in the system will be reduced efficiency of the system will be improved and the next one reactive power supplied by the source will be reduced cost of generation will be reduced size of the source will be reduced so that reduce the electricity bill for the consumer clear this is what the discussion we are having today right i think you got more points so if you are having any doubts you can send your doubts on <clears throat> power systems power systems there is no space sir huh? power systems dot prasad 2014 at gmail.com so you can send your doubts to this mail or or you can post the same doubts in the uh, youtube session what you have seen here so thank you everyone and thank you for attending the class